Um, our next speaker is Nicole Petrusha, who is Assistant Secretary, Indigenous Employment Programs Branch uh, of the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations. Now, Nicole is going to talk to us about the benefits of recruiting Indigenous employees, and um, that's being realised by an increasing number of private sector organisations. Many recognise that the real incomes and real jobs that companies can provide <coughs> is critical to increasing the economic independence of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. The Australian Government can assist companies, your company, to meet its future workplace requirements in both the short and the long term. Your contribution will provide a way of increasing the economic independence of Indigenous Australians and um, Nicole will show us case studies which include um, ACOR and the mining, sorry, how do you pronounce it? Yeah. ACOR and the mining industry. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I might just um, get everybody, um, I know I've got Lynn Lees and ADL in the room and you are really are cool for me. So I'm Nicole Patricia from the Indigenous Employment Program Branch from the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations in Canberra. And we've got a um, Indigenous Employment Program. And um, so I'll just go quickly around the room. And then so I'll be David on the schools of Canberra. Brendan and Jessica. Okay. I'm very close. through all the presentation, I thought what I might do is just pick out, um, I've actually got a bit of footage here um, of some of the mining companies that we've been working with under our... Program. Under the government's Indigenous Employment Policy, the partnership between Corporate Australia that? and the Commonwealth continues yeah. to achieve real employment outcomes for Indigenous Australians. The Corporate Leaders for Indigenous Employment Project, now in its sixth year, generates training and job opportunities okay, and at I the same time anyway, plays a key role in developing Indigenous stuff. communities. Probably, think, the Corporate Leaders Project is expanding with a remarkable flow-on effect. Many more participants, encouraged by management, are looking beyond training and employment to leadership positions within Corporate Australia. Signatories to the Corporate Leaders Project represent a diverse range of Australian enterprises from open cut and underground mining, tourism, hospitality and catering, the transportation and airline industries, agriculture and the livestock industry, manufacturing and motor vehicle assembly, to the commercial service and maintenance businesses. Individual participants also represent a diverse range of occupations, industries and locations around Australia. Corporate Leaders, a partnership between the Australian Government and Corporate Australia that continues to deliver strong employment and training outcomes for Indigenous Australians. Um, so probably what I just wanted to run through today, Corporate Leaders is just one of the programs that we have under our Indigenous Employment Program. I know that you guys here are probably quite familiar with we've got a range of programs. But I think um, a lot of the conversations I've been hearing um, this morning are about that growing connection between government, community and business and how we can harness people's personal passions. And I probably, what I just wanted to sort of highlight is that um, at the government level, there's been a, um, a new approach to uh, managing Indigenous affairs. You'll all be familiar with the um, APSIC was actually um, if you like, replaced by what's called the Office of Indigenous Policy Coordination around about the middle of um, 2004. And um, the whole of the new approach at the Australian Government level, but working in tandem with the state and territory governments, 
is very much about coordination, partnerships, and working with Indigenous communities from the grassroots level to work out um, what we call a shared responsibility approach, where we talk to communities about what employment initiatives, what housing initiatives, what education initiatives they need for their communities to help them um, in, um, gain better um, outcomes for themselves, but also allow them to assume responsibility for driving their own outcomes and securing their own economic independence. Um, so that the, at the highest level, if you like, through the Council of Australian Governments, around about the middle of June 2004, there was an explicit commitment between all the governments to working together um, to improve the social and economic wellbeing of Indigenous Australians. I'll just flip through some more slides. Um, then um, I suppose the other relevant thing too in terms of um, talking to you today, and I think I'm probably talking to the converted, but um, in terms of the Indigenous population, it's actually got a reverse age statistic to the rest of the population. So um, one of the key reasons why we have a corporate leaders program and um, we have an Indigenous employment program which recognises the specific um, employment disadvantages of Indigenous Australians. Um, from a demand perspective though, we believe that there's quite a lot of um, potential in terms of an untapped labour supply that we are encouraging people to consider and um, think about as um, a potential workforce for the future. Um, it's probably not too clear from the graph, but we do know that the um, young Indigenous population is growing quite significantly and that um, there's a, quite a, in particular areas and including in your um, metropolitan areas, there's is a huge untapped potential workforce there that we, we encourage in companies and organisations to consider without drawing into their organisations and use. Um, so um, the current un unemployment statistics, I suppose, highlight some of the um, traditional disadvantages that have been experienced by Indigenous Australians. Their unemployment rate is significantly higher than what we, everybody, um, than um, the overall unemployment rate, so 20%. And given the age profile of the workforce as well, um, unless there's quite a significant growth in the employment opportunities provided to Indigenous Australians, we're more than likely to see an increase in their unemployment rate. So that's why um, the government recognises that we do, do need to do a whole lot more with employment and economic development initiatives with Indigenous Australians. And what we're trying to do is actually increase the engagement with the private sector as well in particular. Um, we know that the employment profile of Indigenous Australians that are in employment at the moment is heavily concentrated in the public sector. And we need to um, work with companies and organisations such as yourselves to try and increase private sector take up of Indigenous Australians as potential employees and look at all the business partnership arrangements that might be possible depending on where your operations might be located. Um, just, um, I'll just, in terms of our corporate leaders program, we do have about 70 companies participating at the moment and um, I know AGL and Lenox are both companies in that program and what we, um, in that program, what we do do with each of the companies we sign a memorandum of understanding, which is like a public level commitment to saying, yes, we do want to work with your companies to increase Indigenous employment opportunities in our operations. Um, very often, too, we make a public statement, which is often about um, a good marketing um, opportunity where we get the minister to join up with the company and make a public level commitment to um, implementing Indigenous employment um, strategies in your organisation. Um, the, in terms of working with your companies who've signed up to these um, memorandum of understanding, we have a package of funding under the Indigenous Employment Program that we can offer to help support um, Indigenous Australians and companies by providing them with um, assistance for things like mentoring, things like training, things like pre-work preparation, etc. Um, and that package of assistance is usually fairly flexible based around the company needs and of course the individual participant needs. Um, they're just a list of some of the companies that we work with at the moment in terms of the corporate leaders. We do have a whole range of other projects and programs so I'll quickly flip to the sectors that um, we have members from include mining, agriculture, accommodation, um, wholesale trade, health and community and constructions being a pretty big 
um, sector in terms of picking up and working um, with the programs that we offer to increase their Indigenous employment representation. Um, the, we did a survey just recently of our existing corporate leaders and companies that weren't corporate leaders for Indigenous employment and um, some of the reasons for joining uh, put up there for you. Good citizenship, um, enhanced reputa reputation, also to access local job seekers and that's been a main driver for some of the tourist companies that we work with work with through the corporate lease program and in particular for the mining companies because given their remote, remote locations, tapping into enhancing their indigenous workforces is usually a key to a sustainable and long term operation for them in those areas. Um, um, ACOR is one of our um, corporate leaders who has um, significantly expanded their support for Indigenous employees through using some of the programs that we have under our Indigenous Employment Program. So each year they've now recently been taking on over 100. Could you send me on the mic because they were Oh, okay. Sorry. Move yeah. the mic. We'll move the mic so we can hear you. Sure. Sorry. Yeah. So they've been taking on over 100 Indigenous job seekers um, in the past two years using um, support from our programs but also um, a significant support from their own organisation. Um, some of the key factors to the success that ACOR have identified in terms of the program they've put together is that they had strong CEO commitment. Um, they also have a full-time coordinator dedicated to managing their Indigenous employment program and um, that program is now mainstreamed so that all managers in the organisation actually have to report on how they're going against Indigenous employment targets in all operations. Um, it did, in ACOR it did start in eight specific locations across Australia but now all company, all of the ACOR hotels in all locations are required to um, provide and build on Indigenous employment opportunities. Um, and probably just one thing I did want to touch on there is um, the CEO commitment actually um, coincides, if you like, with the sort of a business driver as well, I think, in the ACOR circumstance because um, the reason that um, the CEO got behind and drove the program significantly is because they had tourist feedback in the early, around about 2000 from American tourists that they were coming to the Cairns, to the Queensland, up into Broome, um, places like that and they weren't seeing what they were expecting which was Indigenous Australians providing them with their services and their um, sort of, you know, accessible to them in the tourist facilities that the tourists were coming to to see Australia. They were feeling they weren't getting an authentic Australian experience. And so I think ACOR's um, CEO was very committed to the program and that's something that um, I know we've talked to a lot of our other corporate leaders as well and that's a key factor in terms of driving these sorts of programs within organisations and also incorporating it into everyday human resource management. It has to be part of the general way of doing things. It's not sort of, I suppose, much as you've been talking about with the CSR agenda, it's not an additional sort of add-on. It has to be part of the mainstream. Um, also, Camalco. Um, that's one of the mining companies. Now, for obvious reasons, a lot of the mining companies have been in, um, working to increase their Indigenous employment. Um, and I think one of the interesting things with Camalco, um, they've set themselves a target. Now, that's one of the other drivers um, in terms of reflecting how organisations are going and how they can drive performance is actually to have employment targets. They've set themselves a target of 35% local Aboriginal employment by 2010. <laughs> At the moment they're around about 20% in their WEPA operations. That's slightly coloured by the, um, the fact that some of the um, Indigenous Australians working at, in the operations in WEPA at the moment are actually non-local. There's actually quite a transient Indigenous um, workforce in terms of the mining companies um, and that, that's um, one of Camalco's main focus is to try and increase the employment opportunities for local Indigenous Australians in their operations. So in terms of how they're trying to support that is actually to build a partnership um, at community levels in a number of ways and one of the key initiatives they've worked with in WEPA is actually with the Western Cape College which is like the high school for WEPA but also for some of the local communities around that location in Cape York 
and um, through their joint initiatives and the measures that they've put in place they've actually seen quite a significant increase in the retention rates and in the enrolments for the Indigenous Australians in that um, location which has been a really great outcome um, and one of the sort of incentives Kamalka has is that any child who completes year 12 through the Western Cape College or year 10 actually they will offer employment to straight away so um, and that's been part of how they're trying to encourage engage and boost employment opportunities for Indigenous Australians um, that's probably um, just what we were trying to pick up there was that um, I think there's um, a social responsibility agenda that's very much been the topic um, of the conference for the past couple of days but there's a very clear business case for many organisations too to be looking at how they can harness Indigenous Australians as part of their workforce largely because of the Indigenous Australians younger age profile and because um, as I think has been talked about throughout for the past couple of days, diversity in the workforce does bring um, a new perspective and benefits to all in organisations. Um, this is probably um, what you might want to ask me questions about. These are the sorts of programs that we have under the Indigenous Employment Program. We've got a range of programs that we can utilise to work with companies and with organisations to help support Indigenous employment opportunities. Um, the structured training and employment projects are where we have a um, a package of assistance with a particular company and where they take on board usually um, a number of Indigenous employees at one time, provide them with training and then move them into the organisation. That's one of the ways that ACOR has been working with us to move Indigenous employees into their organisation. Um, but we do have a range of um, other assistance um, including um, our National Indigenous Cadetship Program and that's about um, we're encouraging employers to hook up with um, Indigenous students who are doing either tertiary or um, two-year diploma courses and we will support them to um, complete their studies and we ask an employer to sort of, if you like, link up with them and we provide the financial assistance and we ask the employer to provide holiday work experience for that um, cadet and then what we're hoping is that that will lead to full time employment at the end of their studies with that particular employer organisation so we have a website where we encourage indis indigenous students who are looking for a cadetship to register themselves and then we also encourage employer organisations to register themselves and then through that mechanism we try and match people up and um, support Indigenous students to work with organisations across Australia. Um, at the moment we've probably got about 450 cadetships in various companies around Australia and this year we're looking on to take on a board about just under 200. Um, the other um, service that um, I just wanted to highlight, particularly after Michael's talk, is we have um, Indigenous Community Volunteers, which is a not-for-profit organisation which has been set up by the government a couple of years ago. And um, Indigenous Community Volunteers, as the name suggests, is actually an organisation we've set up for people to register where they'd like to do volunteer work with particular Indigenous communities and where they have skills that they feel they would be able to offer as a transfer. And through ICV, we usually have around about... Um, 230 to 250 projects happening each year in a range of Indigenous communities across Australia. We've got probably about 700 um, usually professional people from the private sector largely, about 80% of the people on the books are from the private sector and what we do is we match up a skill that a community may be looking for with the people that we might have up on our books to try and facilitate a project in a particular community and support skills transfer to that, those community members so they can benefit from having someone work with them in that community. So that's sort of, I think if you've got um, employees who are looking for having an opportunity to um, provide a real um, community resource, that's something that you might want to look into and I can certainly provide people with more information about that. If can, you, can you give us an example of a skills transfer? Well, one of the obvious ones is that um, a lot of the um, Indigenous um, CDP organisations um, need um, assistance with 
developing good managerial skills for running their organisation. So we would get an accountant to go and work with the organisation uh, at a community like a local CDEP, work with them for six months to set up good record keeping practices, um, to set up appropriate practices to help them um, fill in proper, ta um, like fill in tax returns appropriately and things like that. So. Um, yeah, so, but we've got accountants, we've had chefs go out to work in communities in the um, local food stores and or in canteens as well. So, and at all range of, through building and construction too, we've had people go out to work with communities where they've been wanting to um, learn skills so that they can do the upkeep and maintenance of their houses on their community. So there's a whole range of, um, the sorts of professionals we'd be looking for would be in, like unlimited and um, uh, the critical thing there is that um, through ICV we wait for a community to ask us for a particular person for a particular project and then the project can happen. So it's, um, it has to be something initiated by the community um, but then we do try and find a match and help support the project that way. Yep. How, how long has the ICV been going? How long has it been going? I think it started in 2001. How yeah. comprehensive is it from a geographic or is it around Australia or, and, and well as, the, as well as the numbers in the bank that you've got? Ah, okay. Um, it started in about 2001 but under a slightly different name and then I think it re bought like it, it became Indigenous Community Volunteers in about 2002. It used to have just a single national office in Canberra where people were registering through website and whatever, but um, it's, it was given um, 20 million standalone funding from the government in 2004 to set itself up as a longer term entity to support the new whole of government arrangements for Indigenous Affairs. So it's now got offices in Perth, in Alice Springs and in Brisbane. So it's got coverage there. They're looking to actually do regional coverage out in New South Wales as well. And so it's got offices in all those locations. The projects that they have too have been spread around very, like throughout Australia. As I said, it's generated by communities. So um, all up, I think they would have had between five to 600 projects completed. Sorry, just a final one. Yeah. What's the ratio of, of indigenous who are registered as volunteers? Uh, I'll probably, I don't have a statistic on that, but I do know that about 80% of the people on the register have a private sector background and usually quite a high level of business skill. So, um, in, like, and they're usually in their mid to late career span, if you like, and, um, yeah. They're um, They could be. Yes, I agree with you. But, um, but on the other hand, it is a skills transfer and when we do the scoping of the project and work with the community, it is about saying that this person comes for a short period of time but with the express objective of transferring the skills to the community. Yep, yep. Sure, yep, yep. So I did want to just highlight we've got a range of programs. I know we've had... Are any of them around apprentices? I'm just thinking of... Uh, through step, we can... Um, yep, yep, yep. Yep, so have you had some apprentices with us? I'm trying to keep some. Oh, good. Okay, all right. So through a STEP project, we can give support for apprenticeships. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, too, if you had a company that was interested in joining our Corporate Leaders Program, we've got a range of supports that we can offer. Right. Sorry. No, I just wanted to ask a question about the Corporate Leaders Program. How long has it been in operation? Since 1999. And obviously, since that time, there's been 70 yeah, and some have come on and some have gone off as well. Is there a target that you work towards that we work by this point in time to have X amount? I mean, I'm just wondering how it works internally. Um, at the moment, we're on a um, big recruitment drive, if you like. So we are looking to encourage membership. Um, what we are particularly trying to encourage is membership from the private sector because we do want to build yeah. um, employment opportunities in the private sector, if at all possible. But um, so at the moment we don't have a target of you know 100, 200, yeah. or whatever. But um, we've got we're certainly working towards increasing our membership base at the moment quite significantly. And um, if anyone has any 
interest or um, have people in mind, please come and see me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and any other questions? Um, one short question, probably is all a time for Individual questions. Oh, just... sorry. Does anybody... Um, so just one other um, program I just want to mention. We've got Indigenous Youth Employment Consultants in around 30 locations, and they're co-located with our job network providers. But they're actually working uh, to target um, Indigenous youth who have become disengaged, and they're either working with them to either get them back into school, or if they um, do want to find a job, then because they're um, co-located with the job network member, then they can work with them to find a job. Um, I just want to alert people to that, and I think there's probably some in the Sydney metropolitan. Yeah, have you heard about that initiative at all? I think in the full that I've got the role in a very minor context, but our program works with you, I suppose, youth who are just about to be just engaged back into students. Yeah, which is amazing, so it's a different group. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.